We're here at the Medicine at SPCA to give you a behind the scenes look at what actually goes on here and to show you exactly where your money is going. And I'm joined right now by Audrey Becker, who is the executive director here at the Medicine at SPCA. First of all, Audrey, just explain to us what does SPCA mean? It is Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Perfect. So talk about a bit about the Medicine at SPCA. Um, how many employees do you currently have here? Uh, we have approximately 14 employees. Most of them are part-time. Uh, we are staffed from 8 in the morning till 9 at night, 7 days a week, regardless of weekends or holidays, or because the animals always need attention. Now, when we think of the SPCA, of course, dogs, cats come to mind, but you do take uh, more than just that, right? Uh, we take in rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, gerbils, different variety of birds. We've taken in uh, livestock, um, goats, sheep, chickens, ducks, and we occasionally take in some wildlife that needs uh, some assistance, whether it to go to a real rehabilitation center or just to be released back to the wild. Now, how big is this actual building? This building is actually 5,000 square feet, which is not overly large when you consider we take in approximately 2,500 animals in a year. Uh, to do it properly and to also have uh, some proper space for the staff, because as it is, the staff have given up most of their space for the animals. You'd be looking at probably closer to 20,000 square feet, and then that way that would make sure we're taken care of for the next 20, 30 years as far as space goes. Perfect. And when it comes to funding for the SPCA, uh, where does the majority of your money come from, actually? Uh, we do do, because we do the pound services for the City of Medicine Hat, we do get an annual grant. Uh, unfortunately, that does not uh, cover as many animals as what we deal with. So the majority of our money does come in from donations, from fundraising, from the adoption fees, uh, sale of pet supplies, anything we can sort of come up with, that's where the rest of the money comes from. I noticed uh, actually right behind you there's a bag of pennies. <laughs> What's that all about? Uh, since they've actually discontinued the pennies, we have done a penny for pets drive. Uh, we, and actually, I believe it's we're close to $3,000 we've taken in with the pennies. And we're continuing to take pennies in because as long as the banks take them from us, we'll continue to uh, bag them up and take them to the bank. Who actually has to count them? Usually me. <laughs> That just seems like a good Friday night. It's, it's a little time consuming at times, but uh, it's really not all that bad. And, and we do have a couple of people on our board that actually does it also. Three, four, five, six. All right, here we are in one of the cat adoption rooms. Obviously, a, a viewing point for anyone who's interested in an animal. Uh, what exactly goes on in here? Uh, what these cats that have come in to us, they've either come in as a stray, and we've held them for 10 days trying to find their owners, or they've been relinquished by their owners to us to find new homes for them. Uh, we do have four cat adoption rooms. This little guy here came to us about three months ago. He had been picked up by a hawker owl. His face had been basically shredded. He, uh, his lip was split, his eye was just about coming out. So after a little bit of rehabilitation with us and uh, some good food because he was very, very thin, he's now actually up for adoption. And our different animals will have different stories on how they've come in and what we've had to do with them. The majority do have to be spayed and neutered and we make sure all cats and dogs before they leave here are spayed and neutered. They're all vaccinated and checked by a vet and their vaccinations include a rabies vaccination and they also all have microchips. Uh, 708, 709, 710, 711, <laughs> slurpy, 712, 730. All right, Audrey, if it's not a cat, it's not a dog, they usually make it into this room, the miscellaneous room? I, or the other room, or the rodent room, or but it really can't really technically be called a rodent room because there's only a couple of varieties of creatures in here that are truly rodents. Uh, right now we do have several budgies. Uh, rabbits, of course, aren't rodents, but we do have hamsters and guinea pigs. So do you have a, a lot of rabbits come through here? We do have quite a few that come through. Uh, we seem to have a little influx this time of the year just because uh, anybody that's gotten them at Easter time, 
and they've had them in outside pens, the weather starts to turn cold, and they, they're not prepared to take them inside, and then they end up coming into us. We have males and females in the room, and rabbits, it's a 30-30-30 rule. 30 seconds for them to have sex, 30 days later they will give birth, and then within 30 minutes after giving birth they can breed again. That's why, you know, they have the problem with rabbits everywhere. Mm -hmm. I kind of live by the 30 second rule myself. So, okay, what room is this then? I noticed there's a, a ton of dogs in here who all seem to be competing with each other for volume levels. This is our dog adoption, and you will see anything from adult dogs that are larger to small puppies to small breed dogs. So this is where if somebody was looking to adopt, they could come in here and just see what you guys have for a selection? Yeah, and then what they can do is if it's an adult dog, they can take them out for a walk just to, uh, for a chance to see how they get along. And we always recommend if you already have a dog at home, that if you've uh, picked one out here to bring your dog in so that they can uh, see how they get along before they ever go home. Normally, I would roll around with the dogs, but I definitely saw this guy pee on the floor about 10 minutes ago. Come on. All right, all right, all right. Settle down, settle down. Shh. Okay, you're a cutie. Okay, so show me the secret. If I wanted to get adopted right now, what do I do? You like look cute? Look cute in front of the fence? How do you do that? Go look cute for me. Okay, so the dogs actually do get some fresh air once in a while. It's not all about isolation and being inside of those cages. What's going on behind us? Uh, this is our dog adoption area. The dogs are rotated outside into outside pens all day long. They're also rotated out into our large compound area where they can uh, let off some steam and run and chase balls. And we're very fortunate that we do have volunteers that come in every day and walk the dogs. Weekday volunteers, is that something that you guys are always in need of? That definitely would be a huge help because some of our volunteers that come in almost every day during the week, they get kind of pushed for time trying to get as many things done as they'd like. So if there was a few others, it would be a lot more helpful for them. Okay, so they volunteer to give them walks. When it comes to the compound, do they stick around and throw the ball around with the dog or is it just a straight run around in that pen? Uh, that they can do. We do have people that throw balls for them and that way they get a real chance to stretch their legs. And So you don't mind if I go for a quick run? No, you go right ahead if you want. I can throw a ball for you. <gasps> I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Okay, if this room doesn't melt your heart, I don't know what will. Baby kitties all over the place. Uh, what goes on in this room? Uh, this is basically our kitten adoption room. These are kittens that uh, have been vaccinated. Some have been spayed and neutered already. And a lot of times, most of them are just waiting for their surgeries or for their last shots because everything does get a rabies vaccination before it leaves. These things are just so cute. Do you have a lot of, do you allow the general public in here to take a look at these cats? Yep, that's how they've chosen them. We don't allow uh, general public into our back areas just because those kittens and cats are under quarantine, but these guys have all uh, passed their vet checks and are doing great. And so pe people can come in and play with them or pick one out. Uh, we do have a low cost spay neuter program at the Medicine Hat SPCA. That's for somebody that wants to have their cat spayed or neutered, but they can't quite afford the surgery. They can come in and apply, and then it's a, a low cost to the person, and we make arrangements with one of the, our vet clinics, and then they just, after we've made the appointment, they take their cat to the appointment and have it spayed or neutered. 1262, 12, here we are in the adult cat holding room. Talk to me about why these cats are in here. Okay, uh, because we do do the pound services for the city of Medicine Hat. Uh, we take in all the strays that come in, whether they come in from public or from bylaw. The uh, first thing we're gonna check for is if they have a license on, a collar with any kind of identification, or a microchip, because any of those things can get the kitty or dog back to their home like right away. 
if they have no ID on them whatsoever, then they'll kind of sit and hope that best hope for them is somebody calls, notices them missing. Uh, one of the problems with this building being so small is that you don't have a full-time vet on staff. Uh, so when it comes to spaying and neutering and that type of, of thing, you have to go outside and a lot of travel time involved, I understand? Well, with all of our spaying and neutering, we take them to a vet clinic. So that means we're booking appointments four days out of the week. So that means we're dropping them off first thing in the morning and then we're picking them up in the afternoon. So it, it does uh, take a lot of time from the staff and that to run the animals around. So one of the goals in the near future is once a larger building is in place is to get a full-time vet on staff and that'll make things much easier for you? Oh, it would make life so much easier because they would be able to do health checks. If we did have a sick animal, they could treat them immediately. Uh, they could do all the spay and neuter on site, the vaccination on site. Uh, a lot less stressful for the animals having to travel around and also getting the immediate vet attention when they need it. After a hard day in the cat adoption room, these cats like to unwind, and I think I have just the thing for them. used to be our storage room but now it is filled with kittens and we did actually have to get a couple of buildings small buildings outside for the storage of our different equipment and stuff as you can see and it's October already it's getting kind of late in the year but we're still filled with kittens I mean, how many uh, holding cages in that would you say you have across the whole building for you know cats dogs um, in the summer we can house uh, approximately hmm, 35 to 40 dogs and we can also house up to 200 cats depending if it's in litters. Uh, during the flood this year we took in in a 48 hour period we took in an additional 130 animals. So it was very very interesting there were crates stacked in aisleways everywhere in every room because we just weren't able to house all of them in a normal situation. Uh, a lot of the staff members here took home a lot of our regular cats just to make a little bit more additional room for the flood animals. But it showed that we can get quite creative with how much space we have. It's just, it's not good for a long-term type thing. Mm -hmm. It's only okay for like a couple of days. So would there ever be a scenario where you would have to turn away animals? Uh, we try not to win uh, because we do have an open door policy. Occasionally, when it's an owner relinquished dog and we do not have a cage available, we will ask the people to uh, call us in a few days or wait a week until we have a little bit more space, just because it's not fair to the animals to crowd them. Right. I noticed when we were back in the dog adoption area, a lot of big animals in there, some of the smaller cats we just uh, witnessed. But when it comes to food, uh, how much food does the SPCA take in on, say, a weekly, monthly, yearly basis? Uh, that's really hard to say. We always seem to do quite well with adult cat food, adult dog food. Uh, the one thing we always seem to be a little low on is like canned foods, both cat and dog, and also kitten food. Uh, we're very, very fortunate. The majority of our food is by donation. We do have to purchase uh, kitten food. And just noticing some of the, the dog food. Do you ever try some of these just to make sure it's okay for the animals? Okay, so I've got two different varieties here for you. One is uh, a weight loss, low calorie. So if you're feeling a little full and maybe you want to trim down a bit, this might be your option. And then we also have an intestinal high energy. And that's if you've had a problem with diarrhea recently. You could try that. Well, I better go with the diarrhea one for reasons I'm not going to talk about right now. Now it's gonna be in the stomach. Is that rice? Yeah, it would have rice. That's in rice. It. You know, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's got a... <laughs> it's got a bit of a gravy flavor to it, actually. Yeah. Water, I need water. <laughs> Waiting for poop. I need to get one of those. Professionally done, of course. Uh, but that would come in handy at work, actually. <laughs> we do, uh, some of the lucky staff actually get to uh, test poop all the time. 
and what they're looking for test, is... Test poop. Test poop. Okay, continue. <laughs> what uh, We do see a lot of uh, different illnesses that are carried in stool and carried in the intestinals, organs of uh, dogs. So we do test stool quite regularly just to check for things like uh, coccidia, giardia, those type of things, because we can treat it. If it's not treated, it is contagious to all the dogs and it'll cause diarrhea and those types of things. Do they get extra pay for that, or is that just part of the job? Uh, some of them do it just because they enjoy it. All right. Well, testing poop. If you ever wanted to know what the working with John Carter in the morning is like, I imagine it's a lot like that. too realistic looking. What does this thing actually do? Basically, what it's designed to do is uh, you give a dog that if you're a little concerned about if he's overly protective over his food, you'll give him his food, and what you'll do is use the rubber hand to take the food away. Safer way than using your own hand to uh, find out if he is very protective over food dishes. Yeah. Any of our animals that uh, we bring back from surgery, of course, we have to do a little after surgery care, uh, just making sure that they're not in pain and that uh, they're not able to injure their surgery sites at all, especially with male dogs. I have worn lampshades on my head uh, for other reasons we won't get into, uh, but generally this is so dogs wouldn't be scratching, trying to bite uh, recent surgeries. Um, in females' cases, in males' cases, it's to uh, stop them from licking themselves. <laughs> yeah. All right, Audrey, this is a concept I'm not quite familiar with. Just ask my mother. This is the laundry room? Yes, most men aren't familiar with laundry rooms, but uh, that's why the majority of our staff are females, just because they unfortunately are doing laundry from 8 in the morning till 9 at night, seven days a week. Uh, you can see we have very large industrial strength washer and dryer. I imagine a lot of fur, uh, a lot of soiled blankets, that type of thing going through here. Oh, most definitely. And then, of course, uh, when it starts to get colder in that, uh, we try and make sure all the dogs, when they're outside, even if they're only outside for a few minutes, they all have blankets to lay on so that uh, they never really get, have a chance to get cold. Any detergent in particular that gets the urine out better than other ones? No, I think it's just the matter of uh, good old-fashioned scrubbing through a washing machine. That's about the only thing that'll do it. That's what I found with my underwear as well. 1503, 1504, 1505. So another concept I'm not quite familiar with, and that's washing dishes. <laughs> Uh, everything here is done by hand then? Um, all of the dog cat dishes and litter boxes and that are all washed by hand. In uh, ideally, um, a high powered uh, dishwasher works better and it's faster and more efficient as far as uh, that goes. Unfortunately, we don't have the space or the money to have one in the old building now. So that is what you're hoping for in the future is some sort of industrial dishwasher? That will be definitely in the plans for a new building. Okay, we've been talking a lot about the space crunch that you guys are experiencing here at the SPCA and a prime example is right beside me here where we're using a bathroom which doubles as a cat room. Is that what I understand? Uh, well, it, ideally it's supposed to be the staff bathroom, but uh, the staff have given up their bathroom to house uh, litters of kittens when they come in. Uh, when we do send them out into foster care and they'll come in to get vaccinated, when the vet is here, they'll get housed for a day or two in this room and then sent back into a foster home. So it's kind of a bathroom slash cat room. In, in terms of bylaw, uh, how important is the SPCA for the community? Extremely important. Otherwise, we'd have not, we would, wouldn't be able to deal with the animals. We'd have to house them somewhere. Uh, in your thoughts, something bigger would be more appropriate for the amount of animals that come through here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just wonderful that these people take care of these animals that uh, are out and about and strays. And uh, yeah, it's certainly, sometimes it seems like it's awfully full in here. It'd be great to have a lot more room. 2,564, 2,566. So we can do two. this every Friday? Damn it, Crystal! One, two,